whole game right here, right here. This is the end of it. Has anyone seen my dad? Hey, hey, no, 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 Be down in a minute, bud. And that is our prayer. That's why we're here today. That's what we experience and as a congregation that we might be able to find him and that we might be a part of someone else being able to find him because he is truly what a gathering is all about. And that really is the message today, a Christmas gathering. Turn with me to the book of Luke, Luke chapter 2, a very familiar story, a very familiar aspect of, of what we understand and how we listen to this amazing event called Christmas. And, you know, I don't, I don't know what your family experienced this Thanksgiving. I know that for my family, well, it was significantly different than, uh, than other Thanksgivings we have experienced. It was a major change in number of people and where the people were and all those other kind of things that are involved in that. But you know what? When the day was done, we were still thankful. Oh, we had to make some adaptations in uh, uh, some things that were delivered and, and uh, kind of long distance kind of things, yes. But you know what? It's not about the stuff. It's not about the things. We were grateful because of the one who gives the things, amen? We were grateful for him and for his love and protection in our life, even in a difficult day. Now, I'm... I am not stumping at all that last Thanksgiving needs to be the pattern for all Thanksgivings to come. Oh my goodness, no. But for that day, it was still a day dedicated to thanking God. I'm just going to play prophet and say that this Christmas is going to look a whole lot different for you and your family, for your church, for your nation than others have. It's going to be unique. It's going to be a one-off. Not going to be something we necessarily look forward to. Ooh, I can't wait until we experience a 2020 Christmas again. No, not that. But our desire is that knowing that things are what they are, we don't lose what is Christmas in our lives. That we don't lose the joy, we don't lose the peace, we don't lose all that this season truly is. Matter of fact, could it be that the blessing that God has in store for us is to finally be able to get past a tradition and to see the truth, to see the real heart and the real meaning of this amazing Christmas season. That's really what these candles here represent. Advent candles. Oh, one candle is lit every Sunday we'll be together. The center white candle will be lit at our Christmas Eve service. We decided to have that on December 24th this year. Well, okay, sorry, at home they're laughing here, so you might as well join there. It's a pity laugh. It's, oh, brother, day, bless your heart kind of laugh. They stand as markers for when we gather. They stand as ways for us just to be able to focus that this is the church together. Now, yes, many of these will be times when some will be at home and some will be here. 
Yes, these times will look different than traditionally what other times have looked like. But nonetheless, even as each candle will be lit, so it will be that we will gather and celebrate and remember and understand and enjoy the wonderful holiday that is the birth of our Savior. A Christmas gathering. An opportunity. You know what? Throughout the month, there are so many opportunities for us and so many things that are going on. We have our, our uh, village Christmas that's happening, that one night uh, ministry to our community. Uh, we have a Christmas Eve service that will be taking place, a very special end of the year Lord's Supper online service that we're expecting to be able to have. Next Sunday is going to be our parade of flags. It'll look different, but it is still going to be a wonderful time to remember our world mission emphasis. And on December the 3rd, our governor, Governor Stitt, has called upon the churches to pray, the people of faith to pray. And we so appreciate his friendship and we appreciate his like heart when we talk about a people of faith. And so he has asked us to set aside December the 3rd as a day of prayer and fasting. Whatever things are now, indications are that things might get worse. And it's going to be difficult and trying and wearing upon so many. We know that so many, even within our congregation, are experiencing the difficulties of this day. And so we will join the rest of our brothers and sisters in Christ and other people of faith as we pray to the one who will make a difference in this season. And that people will be able to find him. That's this this is a Thursday, and we encourage you to participate and certainly to be a part of that. And yet, for all those other things and events that are going to be going on, we gather as a church. What is a Christmas gathering? Well, to be a little bit on the nose, we're going to look at a passage of Scripture that that talks about a gathering. It talks about people who came. It talks about people who were part of this. We saw it a little bit in our nativity scene that our youth put together for us. Our students were able to, uh, to share that with us this morning. But let's go ahead and look and listen to the story and very quickly go ahead and listen to some ways that we understand what it means to gather at Christmas time. And so join me as we read in the book of Luke chapter 2 and we're going to begin in verse 8. Stand with me please. Luke chapter 2 and we'll begin in verse 8. You understand the first seven verses are the story of, of Mary and Joseph coming to Bethlehem and that the baby is born there. Jesus has come to the world. And now listen to verse 8, a very, very familiar passage. In the same region, there were some shepherds staying out in the fields and keeping watch over their flock by night. An angel of the Lord suddenly stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terribly frightened. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. For behold, I bring you good news of great joy, which will be for all people. For today in the city of David, there has been born for you a Savior who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You'll find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly there appeared with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, glory to God in the highest. And on earth peace among men with whom he's pleased. When the angels had gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds began saying to one another, Let us go straight to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened which the Lord has made known to us. Thank you. You may be seated. A gathering. Oh, we don't know how many shepherds there were. We're not sure all the, the, the numbers that were involved, but nonetheless, shepherds gathered there at the manger. They came to be a part of this wonderful scene that was there. 
They didn't know how they would be remembered for a couple of thousand years. They didn't know that their, their little uh, uh, image would grace the tabletops and even the yards and even the stage of so many places throughout this holiday season. All they knew is there was something that called them and they gathered. <laughs> they gathered because the angel told them that there was good news. Have you discovered it? I'm sure you have. In this day, we are hungry for good news. Amen? I mean, we have had our fill of the bad news. We've had our fill of the things that scare us, disappoint us, caution us. We've had our fill of the things that are negative and the things that weigh upon our hearts. Not to diminish those, not to turn our back on those. Certainly things to be concerned about. And yes, we want to... But, Folks, somehow we've got to be able to recognize the good. We've got to be able to see that which is truly the gift from the Lord and understand. And that's what drove these shepherds away from that hillside and to come to this place in Bethlehem. Because there was good news for them. They didn't need to be afraid. They didn't need to be scared. They didn't need to be cautious. But rather it was something good for them. And the good news, there's a savior that's been born. There's somebody who is able to take you out of the dire predicament you are in. And somebody who can bring you to safety. And it's for all people. Good news for all people. I had a conversation uh, a while back with an individual and we were talking about some of the church things and even here within our community. And he was just someone that, it was a service provider that we were just trying to strike up a conversation. And, and he said this, he said, yeah, what really bothers me is that there are churches in town that have services for Mexican people, that was his phrase, and it's in Spanish. And, and I think that's literally what I did. I shook my head. And he said, no, 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 they're in America. They need to speak English. And we don't need to somehow be hobbling them along his words by giving them a language that they understand. They need to be able to learn English. The conversation didn't go real well after that. It was obvious we were on opposite sides of the fence. Folks, I read scripture. I read Acts chapter 2. I read everything about the good news and the good news comes to all in any language, in any situation, in any setting, in any ethnicity. There is no difference between Jew or Greek, male or female. He is God and he has sent his son to be savior of the world. That's the good news. That's the wonderful thing. Let's put the political and other things to the side. Let's just hear the story that Jesus has come. The Savior has been born. Not to, not to put up a barrier, not to put up a wall, but to break it down that all men, women, boys and girls together might gather and worship him. That's the good news. That's the great message that is given to us in this one. Next Sunday, you're going to walk in and there are going to be flags in our auditorium. There's going to be flags lining the wall, flags down here in front. We're not going to have the traditional parade kind of things, but you're going to see the flags. And we're going to talk about it, how each flag represents different nations, different peoples. And yet each and every one of them represent people that Jesus died for and how we as a church are going to be able to give to continue to send those missionaries in this day in this dire hour those people need the good news just like we do we share the good news the good news that we are no longer separated from God by our sin, but rather Jesus came and paid the price for our sin. And we now have relationship with him if we would but say yes and call upon his name. We will gather differently this year. No doubt about it. But we 
will gather to hear the good news. Those shepherds needed to hear that good news. But here's something. The good news could be found not in some far off distant land. Not in some six month pilgrimage. Not in some kind of a, of a televised or read about it in a newspaper event. He is born here, they said. He is born in Bethlehem. He is in a place that is accessible to you. He is here. That's why they could gather. That's why they left that mountainside was because there was opportunity to go and opportunity to see him. He was not distant and afar off. He is here in Beth Bethlehem. Even those gathering at home this morning, those who are gathering here in the sanctuary, you are gathered in his presence. He's here. In Matthew, the wonderful phrase is, you will call his name Emmanuel, God with us. That's the power of that Christmas story. That's the wonderful picture that happened there in that manger, in that first nativity scene. The idea that God no longer afar off, God no longer, we get distant today, don't we? We understand what separation means. We know the agony of being apart. And God calls us to gather together in him. That in his name, we call upon Emmanuel, God with us. We do not worship in isolation, folks. We worship as we gather. He is here. For the shepherds, Bethlehem, for us, Mustang, for folks at home, your living room, we gather in his presence. It's good news, and good news is he is here, but there's one final thing I just want to bring out, and it's an interesting part of the story, that through the angel's proclamation, before the shepherds decided to go, the angels gave them directions. Rather presumptuous of the angels, wasn't it? I mean, the shepherds, as far, they were doing their job. They were doing their work. Their livelihood took place there on that hillside. And the angels just assumed and supposed they were going to go. And they got directions. You won't find him, a newborn baby, lying in a manger. Now, I've often wondered a little bit, how specific was that? Well, we were able to go to Bethlehem and, and our, our visits to Israel. And pretty easy, you can see the geography of it. Back then, especially, Bethlehem was a small little town. It was a little burg it didn't have just an awful lot. And on this certain night, there weren't just a whole lot of babies that were going to be, uh, be born that night, much less a baby born in a manger. Now, I know it might have been hard to find him because, after all, no crying he made, right? Well, we'll set that one to the side. But we know the reality of the fact is that these shepherds knew Bethlehem. They knew probably where a stable was or stables might have been, where a manger would have been. And they just went. It didn't take them long at all. They didn't need to have to look at their phones and ask for directions. The angels gave them everything they needed. You'll find him in a manger. Friends, the great thing about this good news is it just isn't told to us. And it just didn't set a general location. We're given the direction. We're given the specifics. We're gathering because we're told how to find him. The wise men who had come later, they didn't just stumble upon it. They were led by the star. God, throughout this whole event, 
pictures for us that it is not up to us to figure it out. It's up to us just to follow what he tells us and gather and come into his presence. Hear the good news and respond in kind. You see, God wants you to find Jesus this season more than you want to. He wants you to experience the joy and peace, Christian, that maybe is eluding us just a little bit with all the stuff going on. God wants us to experience his presence, lost person. He wants us to be able to come more than our greatest desire. God wants us. And he shows the way. He gives us everything we need to be. He is not hiding from us. He is not keeping us in the dark. He is not restricting us. He is not hindering us. He has thrown open wide the door. He's giving you this day everything you need to have the Christmas season that celebrates the birth of our Savior who would one day die on the cross as our Redeemer and would come out of the grave alive and return as the King of of kings. He's told you how. It's a simple opportunity to just come before him, to gather in his presence like those shepherds of a couple of millennia ago. This season, let us gather. Each time a candle is lit, Let's gather. I know. I know it looks different. I know the gathering takes place at home. It takes place here. I know that the distance is still there and all the other things that go along with it. But folks, we're not going to let. We're not going to allow the circumstances of the day to deny us from enjoying and participating and celebrating the birth of our Savior. Amen? Oh, folks, today we gather. And I wonder if this day might not be best as a time of prayer, a time simply to come before him I'm so thankful for those who have worked so hard to bring the decorations in place. For those who have worked so hard to get the music and, and to, to be a part of our service today. For you to gather and be here, for you to gather at home. It's a conscious decision to be a part. I am grateful that today we're here. Today we're in his presence. We gather in him.